Come on in here because we have a new movie to talk about. It is called The Perfect Find on Netflix. And there's some things that I want to talk to y'all about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back. If you are new here, hey, boo. But if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. My name is Keandra Jackson, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. And today we are going to talk about seven, actually eight, because I'm going to throw in an extra bonus for y'all. We're going to talk about eight things that I found as a licensed therapist that I wanted to break down from the movie called The Perfect Fine. Now, look, I always tell y'all, I have to give my disclaimer. If you have not watched The Perfect Fine, on Netflix, go ahead and press pause. Go on over to Netflix, watch it. It's less than two hours long and then come back because we need to talk about this because it's a lot of juicy stuff we need to break down. But if you've already seen the movie, make sure to comment below. You know I love to have conversations with y'all about the movies and the shows that I review. Let me know what your thoughts were about this movie because I have some thoughts of my own that I'm definitely gonna share. So if you're not familiar, this movie is with Gabrielle Union who plays Jenna, also Keith Powers who plays Eric, and then we got Gina Tor Torres, who plays Darcy, and a whole bunch of other amazing people. But what I love most about this is that this movie was produced by two people that we already know and love. Those who brought us Black Love, which is Tommy and Cody Oliver, they're producers for this movie. Give you a quick and dirty synopsis. This movie is essentially about a 40 plus year old woman, AKA Gabrielle Union, who risked it all. I'm talking about her career, her money, and her reputation to secretly date someone who is much younger than she is. Oh yeah, it gets juicy. Now, before we even get into the meat and potatoes of this movie, can we please have a pause and talk about how Janet Hubert, AKA Aunt Viv, was in the first opening scene? I was like, Aunt Viv, girl, where you been? I missed you, boo. I was so excited to see her. We talking about Aunt Viv from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the original Aunt Viv. Put some respect on that. Put some respect on it. They cracked me up because Aunt Viv, AKA Monica in the movie was telling Gabrielle Union, AKA Jenna, girl, you can't stay here anymore because your daddy don't even want to touch me. We can't even have sex. We can't even do anything freaky don't, because he's scared that you gonna hear us. So girl, you got to go. You got to move out. Her mom literally kicked her out. <laughs> So the first thing that I want to talk about and bring attention to is the fact that in this movie, black women were not supporting each other. Basically, the beginning of this movie, we got Darcy, who, you know, seems to have a, an amazing, you know, business. It's thriving. It's all of those things. Her and Gabrielle, a.k.a. Jenna, had a conversation and it gave real life mean girls. It gave two black women bickering and throwing low key shade. And to be honest with you, it just reminded me of some of the things that happens in real life with black women. I still can't understand why black women bicker and fight each other. Baby, we are on the same team. We already have enough factors that prevent us from reaching our goals. So why are we fighting each other? Can we not do that? Please, can we not do that? I'm talking about we need to support, uplift, encourage, rock out, vote for, root for other women who are absolutely killing it and doing what they're supposed to do. That does not take away from who you are and what you bring to the world and how you show up. Stop thinking that other black women are your competition. No, 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 no. We need to be collaborating. That's another C word. Move from competition and comparison to collaboration. Yes. The second thing that I want to talk to you guys about is you never know someone's personal story. This really hit home for me when Darcy, actually towards the end of the movie, started to share that, wow, the father of her son actually got killed when her son was two years old. So she took all of that energy, all of that trauma, probably all of that grief and frustration, and instead of probably processing it in a healthy manner as she should have and going to therapy, what she did was she put all of that energy into her work into building an empire, into building a business. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I do think that this really shows us people go through things that we're not aware of. We think that they're difficult and mean and disrespectful and all of those things that Darcy was, but also she had a reason why she had that mask and that wall up. She had a reason why she was the way that she was and nobody stopped to have a conversation with her to say, hey, what's going on? Where did this come from? Where did this stem from? So that 
just really applies to real life scenarios because there's so many of us who go through things silently, who go through things in our personal lives and our personal story that no one really knows about. But if we give them that extra amount of grace, that extra amount of love, that extra amount of support, you never know what the outcome could be. And it was just really heart wrenching to me because I tried to put myself and empathize in her shoes because being a woman, a young woman at that, who is a mother of a son that is only two years old and loses their father through murder and her partner through murder, that is a wound that probably will never ever truly heal. And she even shared that her parents and her family member didn't like her baby's father. So there was just added layers on top of layers of all of this. And because she was so hurt and so wounded, she never shared the story or talked to Eric, aka Keith Powers, about this at all. So he had this gap, he had this hole, he had this void because he didn't know who his father was and his mom didn't talk about him. So there's a part of him, a part of his story, a part of his DNA that he was missing. And that's why he wanted to do and create a story about and create like a little movie or a docu about his father's life to help pay homage to him because he knew that that was something that he really needed to do for himself in order to heal what was on the inside of him that was broken. The next thing that we need to talk about is bouncing back after a loss, okay? Gabrielle Union, Jenna, literally, experienced a breakup after being with someone for 10 whole years, a whole decade, boo. And then on top of that, her career simultaneously broke down and exploded as well. So can you imagine two big significant losses happening simultaneously in your life? And I understood that she took a little break. You know, she was hiding. She was probably at her mama's house for that whole entire year <laughs> that, you know, she was out of the limelight to get herself together. But there's something to be said about going through a breakup and a career loss publicly. Now, it's cool to go through stuff with your little family, with your little friends and hiding. Nobody knows you can, you know, cover it up real well. But when you are a public figure, when you are at the height of your career, when you are at your prime and everybody's looking at you and everybody's watching you and you crumble on that type of level, it does something to you, baby. It's hard to come back from. But she did it. She did it in her own unique way, but she also didn't give up. She went back to the very field that she was in and wanted to get back in the game, sucked it up, went and asked for a job uh, with Darcy and wind up getting one. And that was the beginning of her rebuilding herself from scratch all over again. And it takes a lot to rebuild yourself from scratch. So kudos to Jenna Gabrielle for not just laying there and accepting defeat. She took the time that she needed to grieve and do what needed to be done. And then she went back out there to kill it. The next one, number four, I wanted to talk to you guys about Gabrielle Union's Jenna support system. I. I don't really need to say too much about this one, but she had Lala Anthony and her friend group who was there and supportive of her. They were there. They were supportive through the good and the bad. They were trying to hook her up with, you know, a boo because she was saying that she was missing out and she didn't have sex in a long time and she wanted to get something cracking. Her friends were there to support her. What I loved about their interaction and their friendship is that they supported her, but they also allowed her to make her own decisions without trying to override and tell her what to do. And I think that is the amazing components of friendship. It's like, girl, I'm gonna give you my advice. I'm gonna share what I think, but ultimately this is your life and you get to choose what you wanna do. And whatever happens, I will be here to support you as your friend. The fifth thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the generational differences and stereotypes that were portrayed in this movie. So Gabrielle Union was 40 plus years old. Wait, when you're 40, are you considered a millennial or Gen X? Anyways, I'll have to do my research on that part, but she was a 40 plus year old woman and they use terms like being older and bitter and complicated. And then we had Eric Keith Powers, who they didn't really disclose his full age, but I'm going to assume he was like somewhere in his 20s, like mid 20s. So we know for sure that he's a Gen Z. And the stereotypes that come with Gen Z's are what? Spoiled, brat, entitled, they're inconsistent, they're already, you know, trying to move on to the next thing. Like that's the stereotypes and the generational differences between those two. But we can't stop and not acknowledge this whole 20-ish year gap <laughs> that Jenna and Eric had. Man, oh man. Now while I'm here 
for people keeping it legal. So as long as two consenting adults want to get down and do what they do and everybody involved is saying yes and there's no issues, do you, boo? There's no shade, but it was giving a little cougar. Can we say cougar these days? It was, it was giving cougar vibes, right? It was giving a little cougar. And you know what I say. I typically tell people because studies have shown that differences initially attract us to each other, but what keeps us together long term are similarities. And while there was a major age gap and difference between the two, they also had a lot of similarities, especially around old Hollywood and their love for that. I think that's what really bonded them and allowed them to see each other on a kind of even playing field and not really recognize the fact that there was this major major age gap and difference between the two that kept them separated in other areas and other arenas. But it was just interesting to me that upon their first meeting, I'm talking about within the first three seconds of them meeting, Gabrielle said, I think I love you. Girl, what? Don't you get caught up on the fact that this man is fine and he's young and y'all at a party and y'all was drinking. How are you going to tell somebody you love them within 3.5 seconds of meeting? But I did notice that they had instant chemistry. They were like kissing and they were real close and whispering and giving each other flirty vibes and flattering one another. I said, okay, I see y'all little chemistry there. I just wasn't expecting Eric to be Darcy's son. That's when it got tricky. And speaking of tricky, number six is mixing business with pleasure. I'm gonna tell y'all my personal and my professional opinion Never mix business and pleasure if you if you can help it. I am not a fan of this because, man, this very situation was an example of when things go left, when things don't work out and you still got to work with that person, you got to see them. It just creates a very messy situation. And if you're at the height of your career or if you're doing really well, it can push you back. It can put you in a predicament that you didn't want to be in. So if you can avoid at any cost, Mixing business and pleasure, that means getting with some coworker or your boss or something of that nature. I would advise you not to do it. I'm just saying that if it messes with your money, your career, your notoriety, your brand, it's a, it's a no for me. It's a no. There is just no possible way that I would jeopardize my livelihood over a fine man and some good deeds. It's just not happening, not happening at all. We saw this to be evident because things wind up, you know, hit things, they wind up getting caught, okay? They wind up getting busted. Darcy, who was actually Gabrielle's boss and who was Eric's mama, wind up finding out and she got fired. She got fired on the spot, which of course meant her career was going back downhill, her income, back downhill, but also it put a rupture in between Eric and his mom as well, to the point where he had to move out and get his own little apartment because he was living at home still. The moral of number six is mixing business and pleasure is not always the best option. One of the major themes throughout this whole entire movie is number seven, which is privacy versus secrecy. Now, privacy is basically how much information you want to divulge and share with other people. But secrecy means you are intentionally withholding information back because you don't want people to know. Let me give you an example. So say, for instance, I'm in a relationship and I'm married to somebody, right? Let's say, for instance, he's a public figure. He's in the limelight and we out here. OK, we TMZ in it. We shade room in it like it's a whole thing. Privacy is saying we know that we're in a relationship and we're married. We're not trying to hide that, but we are not going out into these streets and saying, hey, we married, we just did it, here we are, this is what we're going, this is what we're doing, like divulging all of our ish. It's basically saying, if y'all see us out holding hands, living our best life with our family on a trip or whatever, and you see us, then you see us and you know that we're together. We're not hiding it, it's not a secret. Secrecy is meaning I don't want nobody to even know that I know you, okay? I don't want nobody to see me in public with you. <laughs> don't nobody need to know we're in relationship, we're married. When we go out in public, we're going to act like we don't know each other. That's secrecy. So whatever you choose to do about your situation, it's up to you. But this whole movie was all about that difference, kind of like figuring out that line between secrecy and privacy. And I think that Eric wanted to be 
out there. He wanted everybody to know, like, let's tell my mom, let's tell all of our family and friends because they already know, like, let's make this thing official. I can appreciate a man, even though he was younger, taking that initiative and saying, hey, we don't have to hide. We don't have to do this because I really love you and I care about you. I want us to be the best version of ourselves and I don't want us to have to hide, you know? So I can appreciate a man taking that type of initiative, but also as a 40 plus year old woman who has a career and a lot to lose, I understood why Gabrielle and Jenna didn't want that smoke. She didn't want that blowback. She didn't want to lose her job, even though she wind up, that wind up happening anyway. But she understood that she had a lot to lose. Being that she had a very public 10 year relationship that was in the limelight, I don't think that she wanted to repeat the same mistakes over and over again. Plus, society, right? Society is saying, girl, you, you're 40 plus years old. You're out here with this 25 year old. She know that the streets would have been talking. And because we are in this social media era where everybody feels like they are entitled to know everybody else's business. That's where this whole issue with privacy and secrecy comes from. We feel that we're entitled to information about other people's lives. And in all reality, it's none of our business. What other people do and what they choose to share and the frequency and the level that they choose to share it with the world is their business and not ours. So listen, this became an ongoing debate between Jenna and Eric and it really hit the fan when Madison, which was Eric's ex-girlfriend, showed up at the kid's party. Eric didn't know that she was showing up, but boy, oh boy, did Jenna get mad and jealous and all of these, well, you didn't hug her 50 times. It's like, chill, B. Remember, you want it to be secret. It doesn't matter. But Eric was like, okay, cool. You can't have it both ways. Pick, choose ye this day what you want to do. You want to be public with our relationship or you want to be secretive, okay? And if you want to go all out and be jealous and mad in this moment, kiss me. Kiss me right now in front of everybody. And Gabrielle was like, that's not fair. And he was like, well, what you want me to do, girl? Make up your mind. And when you do decide to do that, come back and holla at me. So essentially, they just weren't on the same page about this. Moving on to the bonus, number eight. I wasn't going to talk about this, but there was no way that I could. Let's talk about the fact that Gabrielle, again, spoiler alert, <laughs> that Gabrielle was 40 plus years old and pregnant. Now, I love, 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 thank you, Cody, and thank you, Tommy, <laughs> for shedding light on older women having babies and not showcasing all of the negative aspects about that. Now, let's be very clear. I understand that once you hit 35 and over, there's more complications, there's higher risk. I understand that from a medical perspective. But I also understand as a woman who's already 35, and God knows what's going to happen with me and children, who see things from a different perspective and see like this is potentially possible and we don't have to showcase all of the negatives and talk about all of the complications and the difficulties with conceiving. I love the fact that this movie just showcased a 40 year old woman who had a baby, who was pregnant, who didn't have complications, who had a partner who chose to want to be there with her, and then life was good. These are the narratives and the stories that we also want to hear, especially as Black women. We don't want to hear all the negative. We want to be aware of those things because that's a part of the journey, but we also want to know that alternatives exist. We also want to hear the stories of people who are, who are 40 plus years old and have successful relationships and pregnancies and have babies and get married and do all of these things. And we're not, um, what's the word? Suppressed. We're not overtaken by all of these societal pressures and norms when we fit outside of that. Some of us just have stories that are not going to fit into that mode. And I'm glad that the perfect find shed a little bit of light on someone who may have a different journey. Even though this was unexpected, the pregnancy, and I also didn't expect her to get pregnant when they sat down, I didn't think that they were going to talk about this. But I love the fact that this story gave women hope. It really gave women hope. So thank you so much for watching another movie review on my channel. If you haven't liked, subscribed, and commented already, make sure you do that and stay connected with all of the weekly videos that I have coming your way. I'll see you soon. Bye.